Today, we're going to get into the Bitcoin ETF, what that means for the market, and how you can take advantage of it. We have the SEC going over or making the approvals for the resubmitted S1 filings for Grayscale, BlackRock, and Fidelity, all of the other large institutions that have now put in for a spot Bitcoin ETF. So what is an ETF? What does that mean? Um, again, how can we benefit from it? Basically, a spot ETF requires that the fiduciary owns the underlying asset and the ETF trades in correlation with the price of that asset. And people that buy the ETF uh, have exposure directly to the underlying asset that the fiduciary owns in custody. So people speculate that with all of these institutions moving in, there will be a large interest from retail investors. Uh, I don't you know, a lot of the people that are going to be watching this channel already own digital assets. Uh, but if you don't, you're finding this for the first time. Buying digital assets can be cumbersome. Moving them off an exchange to a cold wallet can be cumbersome. Um, and there's a large learning curve that goes along with that. If the average investor can get exposure to Bitcoin through traditional means, which an ETF would provide, it, it brings a lot more liquidity to the market. So what is liquidity and what does that mean? Liquidity allows for the exchange or trading of an asset much easier, right? And also it would increase the market cap associated with digital assets and Bitcoin in particular in this instance. So currently the total market cap of digital assets or crypto is like 1.3 trillion. This could easily push that up to five or 10 times that amount with all of that new interest moving into the market. So what ramifications does that have for the broader crypto market? Well, the majority of digital assets trade in correlation with Bitcoin. 90% um, of the market's traded by bots, and so they'll take out leveraged longs on Bitcoin. Bitcoin price just goes up, uh, they make money, they'll buy other digital assets. Um, there's like 30, 40,000 <laughs> cryptos at this point, but yeah, in, in general, when Bitcoin moves up, it tends to be the first. Uh, and then other altcoins, is what they call them, will move after that. And when this happens, when they implement this ETF, which should be sometime in January based on everything that's being discussed, um, you've got some pretty prominent people in the market making moves around this, which I've found interesting. Um, the main person that you know everybody thinks of when they think of Bitcoin is Michael Saylor. Uh, he runs MicroStrategy. They just made another large allocation to Bitcoin through their fund. Uh, they currently own almost 1% of the total supply of Bitcoin. So that's like 2.1 million Bitcoins. Uh, I think they've invested somewhere around 5.9 billion or 5.89 billion at this point. Uh, and they're currently in profit by about 2 billion. And so they doubled down again. I think they have, they just invested like another six hundred million uh, at the current price, which is around um, forty two, forty three thousand per Bitcoin at this point, in anticipation of the launch of the ETF and continued price appreciation during the bull run over the next year. Before the halving, uh, after the halving, my we'll get into my speculation around this, but I want to break down a few more things before we get there. So BlackRock is another huge uh, player that's stepping into the space with their iShares Trust. Bitcoin trust that they've filed. They've got an ETF or a spot ETF for Ethereum. And then there was also a fake filing for an XRP uh, iTrust or iShares trust. We'll see what plays out with that. And then you've got Grayscale, uh, which is owned by Digital Currency Group. Barry Silbert used to sit on the board of Grayscale and they made some revisions that refiled the S1 just like everybody else had to. And he also stepped down uh, just a few days ago from his board chair and implemented somebody else. He still is the CEO of Digital Currency Group, um, who is, again, the owner of Grayscale Trust. So they've got an ETF that they've filed. Um, a lot of people have had futures on Bitcoin for a long period of time. So traditional investors could have got exposure to uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular through those vehicles. Uh, that doesn't require that they hold the underlying asset like this one does. And so the speculation here is that because they will have to hold the underlying asset, there will have to be a significant purchasing of the underlying asset to satisfy retail's um, 
want to get into this market. So people that are in now believe that there's going to be a significant liquidity event, you know, Bitcoin potentially reaching $100,000, $500,000. If the market cap were to increase in correlation, you know, with retail interest and these, uh, these institutions moving in here in a meaningful way, that could definitely happen. Uh, we could also see people that have held Bitcoin for an extended period of time liquidate into the new volume uh, that's going to come in through these institutions. So that's including but not limited to all of what I'm about to discuss. You've got Mt. Gox and the people that, that stole Bitcoin from that um, exchange back in 2014 that still haven't been caught, uh, even though it's a public blockchain. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> you've got that. You've got the original wallets that have been around since 2009, 2010 from Satoshi that hold like a million Bitcoin apiece. Um, you've got people like Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy. Like I've mentioned before, they own about 1% of the supply at this point. Uh, probably could command a premium for selling that to the institutions to be able to satisfy the demand for their spot ETFs. Uh, and then you've got companies like Tesla that have it on their balance sheet. Um, I think they have $360, $350 million worth of Bitcoin currently on their balance sheet there at Tesla that they didn't sell in Q3. I don't know about Q4. Uh, we will see after those reports come out uh, here at the end of the year. I'm sure within the first couple of weeks of January, we'll know one way or another what they did in Q4 with that Bitcoin. But I anticipate personally, if, if I was in one of those positions um, and I was seeing retail moving in in a meaningful way and the liquidity in the market increasing. Um, it's a great time to liquidate those positions at a profit. And so I don't know if that's what will happen. We will have to see if people continue to hold. You know, Michael Saylor has been on a lot of interviews and said that he will continue to buy Bitcoin up to a quarter million dollars a piece and on up to even half a million dollars a piece. He thinks there are a million dollars a piece in the long term. I'm not so sure of that. Um, we'll have to see how things shake out. But if you are in digital assets right now, this will have a significant impact on the broader crypto market. Again, you know, the majority of the trades are done through leveraged longs on Bitcoin, short positions on Bitcoin. And when those trades come into profit, they then redisperse those profits down into the broader crypto market, especially the top 100 tokens, top couple hundred tokens. You have low cap coins that move, you know, 10, 100,000 X sometimes. Um, when somebody with a large amount of money moves in and then purchases them. Um, so, and then you have a lot of people that rug, right? So that's one of the other impacts of this Bitcoin ETF is stability that could happen within the market. The more liquid market is, the more stability or price stability that we'll have. So if we saw 10X or more in the market cap of digital assets, the volatility in this space would significantly be reduced. Um, you, you can manipulate things with a couple billion right now, but if there's, you know, 10 or 20 or $50 trillion market cap, I listened to Brad Garlinghouse at Swell back in November, and he said that uh, over the next decade, you know, he saw 100x um, in, in the total crypto market. So at that point, you know, we're around $100 trillion asset class. A billion dollars really won't do that much then. Um, I know that sounds crazy, the average person. But when you're talking about institutional money, um, BlackRock manages, they were at like $9 trillion in, in 2020. I think they're back up to like $8 trillion now is what they currently manage. A lot of these asset managers and institutions manage trillions and trillions of dollars. And so they can then manipulate price. But the, you know, these funds and hedge funds and, and venture capital and all these people that have been able to like you know, move price when they step into a market, they no longer will be able to do that. And then if they do move into a market in a meaningful way, it might move at a couple points. It's not going to be, you know, these crazy swings that we've seen in digital assets over the last decade, uh, because it's been a nascent space. It's been under a trillion dollar market cap. The volatility is crazy. Most people can't stomach it. Um, if you've been around for, you know, the, the price action during the bull markets, it's been great. You know, you see, again, 10, 20, 50, 100x on, on your investment, which is crazy. Uh, always take profits. And then, um, you know, and again, I just want to, you know, disclaimer here. Nothing here is financial advice, all for educational entertainment purposes only. Always speak with your financial advisor who will be able to sell you on the Bitcoin ETF 
uh, one of them, you know, here within a couple of weeks. So that that's another implication of this. You you then have traditional investment advisors that can get their clients exposure to it. So that's that's why so many people think that this will have uh, a large impact on the space. It also means that regulators are getting more comfortable with digital assets uh, as a whole and allowing this. So you know, kind of the anticipation is Bitcoin, then maybe Ethereum. And then maybe there's an ETF for a broader crypto market uh, or others in particular like XRP. We'll have to see how things shake out. But this is a big step in the maturity of the space and I'm excited for it. I do want to mention if you do like topics like this, we have a discussion every single Monday in the Mastermind. Uh, we would love to have you a part of that. All you got to do is friend me or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and we'll get you in there. You can get approved. And we also provide a lot of ancillary services there along with exposure to some other private investments that you may not have access to if you are just a retail investor. But the ETF is coming. It should be here in January based on a lot of the information that's been put out. Um, all of the filings for the S1s that were going to be approved in this first round were due yesterday on December 29th. And so the SEC should have you know four or five days to review those. The anticipation is somewhere between the 5th of January and the 10th of January that they will make the approval for these ETFs. And that's when they will launch. And that's when we should see a lot of liquidity move into the market. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful new year and we appreciate you being on the channel and hopefully you found this valuable and we will see you all on the next one.